Hi everybody, welcome back. I'm Ashley. I'm Amy. And we're Martin Midlife Misadventures. What are you doing today? I am making unleavened bread. I am teaching her how to bake some unleavened bread. It is the easiest, the cheapest, two ingredients. I mean, it is... It's uh, there's a reason why it's in the Bible. Exactly. It can you. It's delicious. It's easy. If I can do it, anyone can do it. Yeah. Because I'm not the cooker. But she's very <laughs> smart, and you're a very good uh, pupil, I should say. <laughs> good. Okay. All right. If Amy can do this, you guys can do this. So let's get started. Let's do it. Let's do it. This recipe only requires flour, salt, and water, and actually salt is optional. Ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. Two cups of flour into the bowl. You've been watching. Very good. You can sift this flour, but it's not necessary at all. Okay, now we're going to add one teaspoon of salt. Today we're using sea salt. You can adjust this salt to your liking. You could use half a teaspoon if you wanted less. There you go. But it really does add flavor to the bread. Okay, now you're going to take your cup of water. You're going to add almost all of it in, about three-fourths of it, just to get started. You never know what the air is doing that day, if it's super humidity. Just dump it. There. Keep a little more. Go on. There you go. Now take your fork and mix it up. It looks like you might need a little more water. Yeah. So go ahead and add the rest of the water in. Stir it up till it's just about combined, and then you're going to go ahead and start kneading it by hand. And that looks perfect. I want to show them. Let them see the dough. See how it's kind of hairy? I call it hairy. Just kind of shaggy. Now we're going to stop, scrape the, um, scrape it, not the sides, scrape it off of your fork. And if you want to, you can dust your fingers with a little bit of flour. And now, just start grabbing it and pulling it all together. You can do this out on the surface if you prefer, but we have such limited space that it's just easier to do our kneading inside the bowl. I say us. <laughs> Okay, as she's mixing, she's realizing this is really sticky, huh? Super sticky. So what all you're going to do in that situation is let me dust a little onto your hands. Just a little. Just dust it a little and work it in. You don't want it to be getting too, too dry. Yeah, that's better. Is that better? Yeah. So this is the great thing about this dough because you're not dealing with yeast and sugar and oil and things like that. You can adjust the water and the flour. That's looking very, very good. Feels much better. Okay. All right, let's put it out on the board now and show them. Okay. Look at you. Yes, a little flour. Okay, now you're not going to need this now. We are going to cut it into pieces. So you could make it like a log type shape. So now she's got it on her board, looking good. And we're going to kind of make this into a log type shape. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because we're going to need, I think we can get nine pieces out of this. Nice, like, good sized pieces. That long? Mm hmm. Longer. You could do this a couple ways. You could cut this into three pieces and then cut each piece into okay. three pieces. Is that how you want to do it? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. I can tell that the one in your left hand is smaller than the rest, so you might want to... Yeah, there you go. Alright, now let's make them into separate three pieces. 
Okay, Amy's got her first little dough and she's going to pat it out. Now flip it over. Pat it again. And we want to be a little bit liberal with the flour, okay? Because they're going to roll so much better. So roll it a couple times and then flip it and roll it a couple times and then flip it. Now flip it. There you go. Now you can flip it again. Now this is a personal preference time here. You can get this as thin or as thick as you would like it. This one's looking really, really good. While Amy is rolling that out, we need to turn on the stove. And let me tell you, you need to get this pan piping hot. I mean screaming hot. I am using cast iron. It works great, but you do not have to use cast iron. I have made these in every type pan that I have. The key is just getting the pan super, super hot. Let's check in. That looks perfect. Okay, we don't need to overthink it. Let's put that one away and get a new one. Okay. You're doing a great job. Just don't forget you're flipping. By flipping it continuously, it keeps it from sticking to your surface. And it helps you get a better shape out of it. But again, shape doesn't matter unless you're wanting it for a taco because believe me, these make the best tacos, don't they? Yes. Super filling. All right, that looks great. We're going to show you how to make them delicious and savory. In this bowl, we have some fresh chopped green onions and fresh basil from our garden. Amy's just going to press some on top of the pile. Yeah, you can be pretty liberal with it. Here, let me show you. Okay, now, get your rolling pin. Okay. And press it in. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, it's okay, it'll peel off. Let's flip it over, maybe grab some of this flour. She's just going to keep rolling it out, and it's going to press in all these fresh herbs. Flip it. There you go. Why is it sticking so bad? You need a little bit more flowers, all. Look at all that goodness in there. That is That's, the ugliest thing I've ever done. I think it's going to taste <laughs> delicious. All right, we've got the fan going because this is super hot. You just put it right on the pan, right on that pan. Let me get you a little turner. Now, see how she's moving it around? You've been paying attention. This is awesome. You're basically going to cook it for about 30 to 45 seconds on one side, and then you're going to flip it, and you're going to see the separation is going to start happening. Yeah, just press it like that. Once we do it on the final flip, it'll start bubbling. Look at how nice and brown that is. I, stop for a second. See how it's starting to get bubbles? Look at that. Now flip it one more time. And we have ourselves an absolute perfect unleavened flatbread. 
so yummy. You can go ahead and stick it in this. I have this ready. Look at that. Now at this point, if you wanted to, let's do it. We could take a little garlic powder. This is garlic powder, not garlic salt. Just sprinkle a little over it. You could add that to the dough from the beginning too. That smells good. It really smells good. This one didn't puff up as much. That's because we pressed in the... Look at that goodness. I mean, really. Let's eat. Okay. This one just goes without saying. We're going to eat it, but I want to show them how to make a nice, sweet treat. Get you one of these. And you need butter. Get you some butter. Melt your butter on there. Delicious. This is just cinnamon and sugar. I keep it in this container. By the way, your Parmesan lids fit your mason jars and make great little shakers. So we're gonna sprinkle some cinnamon and sugar. Uh-oh, nice little clump there. Look at that. What kid would not absolutely love that? You could use this to make a sandwich, like a roll, right? Mm -hmm. A roll up. A wrap. A wrap, that's what I'm thinking of. You can make a wrap on this. We're just gonna put some butter and eat this one like this today. All right, this is the best one. What are you gonna try first? I'm gonna try this fancy schmancy one. Delicious. Mm. 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 Mm -hmm. It's good with that fresh veg in there, huh? Man. Can you imagine a pizza on that one? Oh, that would be so good. It would be a great crust for a little personal pizza. Mm. We could even put our taco in that one. We've only done it in the plain ones for our tacos, but I bet that would be delicious. You know what would be good is cilantro, fresh from cilantro. Oh, there you go. We could add that next time. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you need to try the sweet one. Okay. I know she's going to love the sweet one because she loves cinnamon sugar flatbreads, huh? Mm-mm. That's a good little treat. It is a when real... If you don't have baked goods or something, that... You could even make a little uh, powdered sugar drizzle and put it on mm. there. Mm -hmm. Good, huh? Mm. Now, do you want to try the plain one? Let's try the plain one. Yeah. I like plain ones. So filling, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are good with uh, peanut butter. Very good with peanut butter. And so, syrup. what do you recommend people do? You made those. It was easy, huh? Mm hmm Very. And I'm not the cooker. But you're a good eater. I'm a good eater. All right, everybody. How about that bread? You did amazing. <laughs> well, thank y'all. Thank you very much. It, it is easy. It it's is very easy. easy. I think if I did it a few more times, it would be super, super easy. Amy's a very big per. Uh, perfectionist I guess yeah. I should say she doesn't like when it's sticky and and all those things but again in time it takes practice once yeah. you make it just a couple times you know exactly how that dough should feel it's something you can make the dough and let the dough sit the more you need it the more gluten strands are gonna come out of it so you know actually needing it a lot will make it even better yeah because then it'll be uh, flakier right right yeah we started with this bread because it's the first bread we've ever known of right it's in the Bible which is not a cookbook and it yeah. tells you how to make this bread it's actually food it is food <laughs> It it's is delicious. Good, it's delicious, good you guys. Food. Super easy to make. If I can do it, anyone can do it. Yep. So no excuses. Get it done. And there's Practice. a million and there's a million ways to use it. I mean, like we mentioned making a pizza and we showed you how to make a little sweet treat, but man, we've had tacos on it. Mm -hmm. Just anything. Just absolutely anything. It's just a great vehicle to fill you up. And like with tacos, a man that would usually eat like four tacos 
really could only eat like two of yeah, them you made did, with this. Yeah, if you did them a thicker um, yeah. consistency, for sure, only two. Um, but great for like wraps as well. Mm. So good. Or just some butter and yeah. yum. So start with this. It doesn't get any easier. And this is the cheapest. There's no cheaper bread. There's absolutely no cheaper bread product you could bake. And it is actually really delicious. Yeah. Just put your own spins and seasonings and things like that into the dough. And it's like a yeah. little miracle. Yeah, you can put oats in it. I mean, you can yeah. do whatever you want with it. It's super, super I've good. made it with wheat flour, just all kinds of different things. So get practicing on that. And if you want to start, yeah, if you want to start small, use one cup of flour, a half a cup of water, a half a teaspoon of salt. It'll make you a little four to five. Uh, right. Yeah, tortillas. she does that for dinner most times. Just yeah. makes the super small amount just for dinner. Because so they good. can reheat. We don't have a microwave, so if yeah. we reheat them, it needs to be on the uh, in the oven or on a stove top. So they can dry out if you let them sit too long. Yeah, so it's I recommend daily bread for a reason. You're yep. supposed to make it daily. Every single day. Yeah. So make small batches to learn how to do it, and uh, it'll really help you conserve on a lot of flour and fill those bellies. Yeah, so good. Good to it. Guys. All right, I expect to see some comments in the next couple days down on this video saying, I tried it, I yeah. tried it. I want to hear all about your experience with this because it, it really, truly does not get cheaper or easier. Yeah, like I said, if I can do it, anyone can do it. All right, everybody, give us a thumbs up. Please like, share, subscribe, leave us a comment. And we are going to be talking to you really soon. God bless you all and bake that bread. Peace.